And we're kicking off with AEW Wrestle Dream, and after weeks of speculation, Edge made his debut for the promotion last night. We should clarify that it was Adam Copeland who made his debut, as the Edge name is owned by WWE, and Copeland made his debut after the show's main event. That match saw Christian Cage retain the TNT title in a 2 out of 3 falls match against Darby Allin in the latter's hometown of Seattle, thanks to the help of new ally Nick Wayne. As Wayne, Cage, and Luchasaurus were ready to put the finishing touches on their assault of Darby Allin and Sting, the lights cut out and a video showed a mysterious figure driving a fancy car through Seattle. Copeland's trademark Metalingus theme by Alter Bridge blared through the Climate Pledge Arena, earning the loudest pop of the night, and the Canadian appeared through a fog of smoke and pyro. Copeland initially teased a lining with Cage and his allies before attacking all three men and hitting a huge spear on Luchasaurus to save Sting and Allen from more harm. Copeland then shared a handshake with his fellow WWE Hall of Famer Sting as the pay-per-view went off the air, ending a massive debut for the former WWE World Champion. After Wrestle Dream went off the air, Copeland made his way around ringside and greeted fans and hugged Taz and Excalibur as he passed them. The Rated R Superstar then went into the crowd for a long time before heading to the back and on the post-show media scrum, Tony Khan started things by saying Copeland has signed a full-time deal with the company. This means he'll be a regular on TV each week and Khan also added that Copeland's first match will be against Luchasaurus on the October 10th Dynamite. Copeland, or rather Edge, had his last match with WWE in August, defeating Sheamus on an episode of SmackDown in his native Toronto. And what do you make to Adam Copeland being All Elite? Let us know in the comments. Wrestle Dream also saw Brian Danielson face Zack Sabre Jr. in a heavily intense match, which was only fueled by Danielson slapping Zack during the Go Home AEW collision. Given the talent of the two men, it should come as no surprise that the pair had an instant classic at Wrestle Dream, with Sabre targeting the surgically repaired arm of the American Dragon. Nevertheless, Danielson fought through the pain and in the final stages of the clash, hit a regal plex and a boost psycho knee for the two count before ultimately securing the win with an exposed knee to the jaw of Sabre. Post-match, Danielson extended a handshake to his opponent, but the New Japan talent refused and rolled out of the ring, so this may not be the last we see of these two in the ring. Wrestle Dream also saw MJF in action as the AEW World Champion was able to retain the ROH World Tag Team titles against The Righteous after he had to go it alone without Adam Cole. On Dynamite, Cole disclosed that he is dealing with an injury that will require surgery, and that show also saw Jay White attacked by someone wearing an MJF devil mask. Some have naturally accused MJF of the attack, especially given that White had made his intentions to take the AEW world title clear earlier in the show, but MJF is claiming his innocence. During the post-Wrestle Dream scrum, MJF said he was off to be accused of attacking White, or as he called him, Tofu, and was mad that some schmuck stole his mask out of his bag. The person in the mask didn't seem to have the same size as MJF, and who do you think was under this mask? Give us your predictions below. During his match with the Righteous, MJF tried to get the advantage with a unique maneuver, that being grabbing the crotch, and this spot didn't go unnoticed by Max Caster. Caster, who has often insinuated that he and MJF are a couple, tweeted that MJF knows his way around a crotch, as the acclaimed star will continue to tease that he's more than just good friends with the AEW world champ. During the AEW Wrestle Dream Zero Hour show, Jon Moxley used some language that AEW didn't agree with when he said that Brian Danielson reads a lot of weird tantric sex stuff. Later in the night, Moxley joined Wheeler Yuta for his match with Ricky Starks, and Moxley revealed that he was fined for the language he'd used and needed to watch what he had to say. Moments later, Moxley would use the S-bomb anyway and would watch the Starks vs. Yuta match as well as the Brian Danielson vs. Zack Sabre Jr. match. This isn't the first time AEW has fined a talent for profanity, as Soraya was fined for calling fans and we'll have to see if Moxley has learned his lesson after being fined at Wrestle Dream. Last week, Sammy Callahan's contract with Impact Wrestling expired after years with the company, but it may not be long before the former world champion has a role with AEW. Fightful Select reports that several AEW stars are pushing for Callahan to get signed, the most notable of which being John Moxley, who worked with Callahan on the Independence. 
Callahan would make an excellent addition to the roster, but could also be effective backstage as AEW is hoping to increase its number of producers, and time will tell if Sammy Callahan is one day All Elite. More from Wrestle Dream as last night's event saw the AEW debut of two former WWE superstars, those being Shane Thorne and Nick Miller. Today, the pair are Shane Haste and Mikey Nichols, who along with their current faction in New Japan, The Mighty Don't Kneel, challenged AEW Trios champions, The Acclaimed. Unfortunately for Haste, Nichols, and Bad Dude Tito, they were unable to capture the titles on the kickoff show, but made quite the first impression during their first bout in an AEW ring. During his AEW International title win against Jon Moxley, it is believed that Ray Phoenix had suffered an injury, albeit one not as bad as the concussion Moxley suffered. Unlike Moxley, Phoenix did compete at Wrestle Dream, but it looks like the AEW International Champion is again hurt following his four-way tag team match, which saw the Young Bucks get the win. The commentary team noted that Phoenix was being tended to by AEW's medical team, and this situation comes just days before he's supposed to defend his title against Nick Jackson on Dynamite. Phoenix was out of the action for over half the match, according to one fan on Twitter, and several fans said that Phoenix seemed hurt, leaving Penta El Cerro Miedo to do most of their team's work. Phoenix was barely cleared in time for last week's title defense against Jeff Jarrett, and while it's unclear what spot caused him to get hurt at Wrestle Dream, we'll follow this situation for further updates. So that was AEW Wrestle Dream, and was the show a perfect pay-per-view? Well, it's hard to think of any event which is 100% spotless, but Wrestle Dream certainly delivered a bit of everything. If you like technical clinics, Danielson and Sabre over-delivered in their match, which Danielson won, and if intense rivalries and brutal physicality are more your thing, Christian Cage and Darby Allin has you covered. If a match of the year candidate is more your speed, Swerve Strickland and Hangman Page delivered in their bout that saw Strickland best the former world champion. As for wanting surprises, the arrival of Adam Copeland may not have been a total shock, but his debut was well executed after Cage won 2-1 to, to retain the TNT title. If you're more into women's wrestling, well, Wrestle Dream didn't have a ton, but the sole women's match that saw Chris Statlander retain the TBS title against Julia Hart showed two of AEW's very best. We said Strickland Page could be a match of the year, but for match of the night, that'll vary from person to person. Some may pick MJF's win over The Righteous for the comedy spots, while others could go with the AEW World Tag Team title match that saw FTR best Aussie open for being an example of what great tag team wrestling looks like. On the kickoff show, fans saw Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, Mercedes Martinez, and Diamante come up short against Satoshi Kojima, Keith Lee, Athena, and Billy Starks, while Claudio Castagnoli defeated Josh Barnett. Luchasaurus defeated Nick Wayne, and on the main show, Eddie Kingston retained his gold against Katsuyori Shibata. Ricky Starks got another big win in his career, this time over Wheeler Yuta, and it was Don Callis' family of Kanosuke Takeshita, Sammy Guevara, and Will Ospreay that defeated Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, and Kota Ibushi. With so many things to choose from, it's much easier to focus on the positives than the negatives. This was a stellar event that's going to be remembered by fans for a long time to come. Now, it's been over a month since fans last saw Sheamus compete on the August 18th SmackDown against Edge in what would be the Canadiens' final match in WWE. As for Sheamus, he's still with the company, at least for the time being, but the man who has had banger after banger after banger could have one foot out the door. It's been reported that Sheamus' contract with WWE will expire in 2024, and there's no word if he's re-signed, and this news comes after reports that he's frustrated with his booking as of late. Speaking with the Daily Star in August, Sheamus said he was upset with WWE for not utilizing him properly after his Clash of the Castle epic with Gunther in Cardiff, as Sheamus was white hot at the time. What I was upset about and what really bothered me was the creative after that. I came out of that with so much organic momentum and it was just wasted, it didn't go anywhere, it was a dead end. Just like with WrestleMania, Drew went away because he was injured, but I was ready to go and then just nothing. There were no avenues and nowhere to go and that's frustrating. Sheamus has reportedly spoken with management about his booking, and the tense meeting resulted in the Irishman making it clear that he will move on if his booking does not improve. It's also worth noting that Edge and Sheamus have a deep friendship, as it was a workout with Sheamus that convinced Edge to work towards an in-ring return. Could Sheamus join Adam Copeland in AEW in 2024, or will he come to a new deal with WWE? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. 
Before she was a Hollywood starlet looking back on yesteryear, Tony Storm was with WWE and during her time on SmackDown had quite the odd feud with Charlotte Flair. On paper, a feud between the two should have been excellent, but the storyline was more about throwing pies at each other than anything else, something fans didn't want to see one bit. Speaking on the latest episode of AEW Collision, Storm went on a rant about the wrestling business and made reference to her pie-throwing segments with Charlotte, as she said, This business can be a cruel mistress. I do miss the old days. It was a happier time, a simpler time. Slap on a backwards hat, slap a pie in someone's face, they loved you. Now it's, what have you done for me recently? Now it's, if you don't bleed and cry every week, then you won't get a good write-up in the trades. Well, pardon me for being a star, and if the world has forgotten what that looks like, then chin up, tit the and I guess I'll just have to remind them. Just days after facing Flair for the SmackDown Women's title, Storm flew herself home and requested her release from WWE, and given her success in AEW, that exit was almost certainly for the best. Not too long ago, news came out that the authors of Pain re-signed with WWE last year, but fans are still waiting to see them, but now we know why. When Ringside News spoke to a tenured member of the WWE creative team about AOP and Paul Ellering, they were told that the group is under contract, and there has been discussions about them being used. WWE is trying to nail down a good idea for the former champions, and while Ellering was spotted with AOP in September and there were rumors of an NXT return, that hasn't happened yet, despite Paul being at a taping. It's expected that Ellering and the AOP will be reunited on TV, but no plans have been 100% decided just yet, and it remains to be seen what's next for the group. This weekend, WWE will host its Fastlane Premium Live event, and this show will see the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships on the line. While no match has been announced just yet, BWE has reported that the gold will be on the line, and that two individuals from Monday Night Raw will challenge the Judgment Day. There's no word on who those two will be, but with the Judgment Day having issues with Jey Uso, Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn as of late, there's no shortage of options. Then there's also established tag teams like the Viking Raiders and the New Day who could challenge for the gold, and who do you hope to see get a shot at the titles at WWE Fastlane? At NXT No Mercy, Becky Lynch proved how violent she can be at her Extreme Rules match with Tiffany Stratton, and the man was able to retain the NXT Women's Championship. Lynch and Stratton used an assortment of weapons for the match, including a barbed wire baseball bat, a weapon that caught the eye of one of TV's most popular shows ever. When Lynch shared a photo of herself backstage with the bat, the official Walking Dead account called it a nice-looking bat, a nod to their own character of Negan. For any not knowledgeable on the show, Negan, as played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan, was one of the show's most popular characters and had his own barbed wire bat, which he named Lucille. Though she emerged the victor, Lynch did not leave No Mercy unscathed, as Sean Ross Sapp would report that the NXT Women's Champion required 11 stitches after a match with Stratton. Lynch has also shared a photo of a gruesome cut to her arm caused during the match, and with her next title defense scheduled for tonight, she won't be at 100% when she faces off with Tegan Knox. For over a year, Tony Khan has been running Ring of Honor with a talented roster of wrestlers, and during the latest taping, former WWE superstar Fred Rosser made his debut for the promotion. While the former Darren Young would lose to Scorpio Sky, he certainly looked impressive in his debut match, so don't be surprised if the former New Japan Strong Openweight Champion is here to stay. During a recent episode of Raw, Bronson Reed and Otis faced off in an impressive match given the limited time they had, and on Twitter, Ryan Alvarez would praise both men for their efforts. In response, Reed would acknowledge Alvarez's comment, but that acknowledgement may prove to be costly for the Australian superstar. Wade Keller of PW Torch reports that in the past, something that seems minor could lead to a push being derailed, as WWE doesn't like the idea of wrestlers seeking approval of outsiders. It was also stated that for a time, it was Bruce Prichard's job to seek out anything on social media that Vince McMahon wouldn't see, and rat on talent to the boss if they said something WWE didn't like. All Reed did was acknowledge a wrestling journalist's praise, but that may prove to be a problem for Reed, and we'll have to see if his booking going forward is reflective of any punishment. On the all-in, zero-hour kickoff show, Powerhouse Hobbs and Miro had a confrontation in the ring, setting up their match for AEW All Out the next week. That confrontation resulted in Miro signing the contract for the All Out match he would later win, but this all-in segment only came about after work by the Bulgarian. Fightful Select reports that until Miro's intervention, there hadn't been plans for a segment between the two at All In, as they report, 
Miro and Will Hobbs were not originally planned to appear on All In. However, we are told that Miro went to Tony Khan and passionately pled to be on the show, unhappy he wasn't in any capacity. A compromise was made to have the contract signing element added. Miro would have likely preferred to wrestle at All In, but his contract signing at least allowed him and Hobbs to appear in front of AEW's biggest audience in what was still a very cool moment. With All In 2024 already confirmed, Miro will be hoping to do more when AEW returns to Wembley, but with Miro not competing since All Out, who knows when we'll see him in the ring next. At WrestleMania 39, Austin Theory picked up a controversial victory over John Cena, and while that feud seemed to be over, Theory recently took aim at Cena during a recent WWE Live event. During his match with LA Knight, Theory mockingly gave the crowd Cena's you can't see me hand gesture, but with Knight getting the win, it was WWE's budding megastar who got the last laugh. 